Hi, my name is Zanna Hoskins and I'm a florist and a flower grower down here in West Dorset and I run Spindle Flowers and I'd like to take you around my field today and show you some foliage. So, there are loads of different kinds of foliage. We've got an acre and a half here and we've planted it up with a, a wide variety of plants because we're trying to experiment and see what works really well. As a florist, I'm really interested in longevity in the vase. I'm interested in shape and texture um, and colour and scent and things like that. But also as a grower, I'm interested in how long things um, take to reach productivity um, so I've learned quite a lot about that um, I'm going to share with you this bundle of lovely things here just so I can give you an introduction um, and then we'll I'll take you on a tour okay so we've got a lovely myrtle here just coming into flower a variegated myrtle and then cotoneaster see this is what I really love about foliage is the shape that things take. We sell mostly to event florists and they're interested in large scale, interesting shapes and things like that. Um, okay, so this is one of my favorites. This is Abelia phylum, which actually has got beautiful blossom in the early spring. It smells of honey. But in at this time of year also, it's fabulous foliage to yeah. use in the vase. And then, what's this? Oh, lovely rose hip. Can you see they're just coming, these rose hips? They'll be bright red by the autumn. Small, easy to use in the vase. Uh, this is a cardoon. Works really well in the vase. Very sculptural. And then, oh, look at this lovely Rosa Glauca. Isn't she a beauty? And then. Okay, so some of my favourites are these Critigus. I've got 12 different kinds of Critigus on the field. If you can see. It holds up really well at this time of year. This Glaucus one is absolutely my favourite. I think that's Orientalis and there's Dubro, Durabrovrinensis. I didn't study horticulture at college, so Sometimes my pronunciation is a bit strange. Okay, and then there's finally, this is Physocarpus, which some of you will know. So one of the things that I do is I've got different stands of Physocarpus, so I cut them at different times of year. So these two, this is Diabolo and Darts Gold, have lovely straight stems, really, really tall, great in the vase. That's this year's growth. And this is last year's growth, which starts to take on interesting shapes and it has these lovely seed heads. In the spring, it has lovely flowers. I've been using this for months. The other one, this year's growth, I won't start cutting until sort of the end of August because it's still a bit soft. That's the thing with foliage is that most of it is good from after midsummer. That's the sort of shrubs. Um, but obviously with the perennials, you can cut those any time really, um, as long as you condition them. You've got to condition everything in deep water, cut early in the morning or late in the evening when there's a lot of moisture in the stem so that they stay um, straight and strong and don't wilt in the vase. This is five years growth. Before we planted this field, it was just grazing. There was nothing here. Okay, behind me here you've got, I don't know if you can see, the alder. I cut alder in the spring for its red catkins, well actually different colours. This is the perennials, one of the perennials beds. The perennials, as I said, lots of flower growers use perennials for filler and foliage. Herbs, that kinds of things, um, mint, oregano, marjoram, but also things like um, raspberry leaf foliage is brilliant, sedum, geranium, scented geranium. Um, so, and they all add a wonderful freshness and a wonderful scent and texture to arrangements. Okay, so I'm gonna show you around now. So foliage for all types of year. 
all, all times of the year. This Berberis is brilliant for the spring. Berberis coriana, lovely yellow flowers. The bees love it. I've used this in rings, um, foliage rings for early spring weddings. Really, really great. And then for the summer, you've got lovely things like, well, this viburnum is really good. Um, Philadelphus, the Spirea, Eliagnus. Okay, here's one of the Physocarpus with its seed heads. And then another one. That's this year's growth. Behind you've got Cotinus, Viburnum lantana, Fatinia, Pittosporum, and then Cornus here. Oh, and here's one of the spindles. That's what I named my business after. I don't know if you can see these lovely berries. They're going to turn really bright pink in the autumn with lovely orange pips inside. Okay, let me take you to the cornice. I do the same with the cornice as I do with the Physocarpus. I've got different stands of it. So this is last year's growth with its lovely shape and flowers. It'll have berries as well. Stands up really well, but only after midsummer, really. And then this is this year's growth of the cornus, the, sorry, cornus, yeah. Lovely and straight, goes very bright red in the autumn and I use it for wreath bases so that you can then moss up. I twist it around on itself and then you've got a totally biodegradable mo um, wreath base. Okay. I don't know if you can see in the distance there, the view. Okay, and then this dumpy bag here, these dumpy bags, have got uh, manure in them. A manure, uh, wood chip, rotted down and fleece, um, so that actually I can then mulch these plants in the autumn. We do use um, <clears throat> mycorrhizal fungi and bone meal when we plant the bare roots. <clears throat> We've got very stony soil, so we, we, we planted bare roots when we began. So these are literally only five years old. Um, but we, we, we try to use the mycorrhizal fungi because it, it, we grow according to permaculture principles. So we're using the, uh, the natural fungi in the soil, which feeds into weaves between the plants. Um, and we're kind of adding to them when we plant. Um, we also use things like nitrogen fixers. So all the alders are nitrogen fixers and the broom. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take you down here. This lovely Cotinus has got its fuzz on it. A little Rowan. And there's a Spirea, a beautiful little Spirea. It's not looking its best right now. In the spring it looked really lovely. I used it loads. And then in the autumn it has this wonderful fiery foliage. Really useful and really great for filler. Okay, there's so much, there's so much to tell you. I can only really scratch the surface. Um, but yeah, have a look on the Flowers from the Farm map and you'll be able to see all the hundreds, many hundreds of growers across the UK who are getting involved in this wonderful Flowers from the Farm movement.